All right, welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can rig and animate a 2D character with Unity's new 2D animation system. To spice things up a bit, we are going to use some nice squash and stretch, as you can see here on the belly. Okay, let's get started. I began with a new Unity project. I'm using version 2019.4.2, which is the latest long-term supported version. As a template, I chose 2D, which means that most features like the 2D animation and the PSB importer are already installed. One thing that is missing though is the 2D inverse kinematics. It isn't necessary, but it comes in pretty handy when animating limbs like arms and legs. So in the package manager, I choose show preview packages and then I install the 2D IK. Now we need something to animate, so I prepared this fat man here in a free open source software called Krita. If you want to use my sprites, I will provide a download link in the description. In here I sorted the files based on the rendering order, so the front arm is on top, then the head, the body and so on. If you use Photoshop, you can just export as a PSB file, but if you use Krita or other free tools like GIMP, you need to use a quick workaround. Just export as PSD and then rename the file ending to PSB, ignoring the warning. And now we can drag the file into Unity and it should look like this. Ok, time to create the bones. First I open the sprite editor and from there I go into the skinning editor and hopefully your Unity doesn't crash like mine did. After a quick reload we can create the bones here. I start with the root bone, which is the lower hip bone, and then I work my way up from there. It probably doesn't happen too often, but when rigging obese people or creatures, I still place the bones where the actual bones would be, meaning the spine. So not right in the middle, but a bit on the left side. If a sprite or bone is in the way, you can click on visibility in the top right corner and just hide stuff. When all the bones are created, you can go into preview pose and just play around a bit to see that everything is connected the way you expected it to be. After that, I prefer to name all the bones. A single mixup later on when you're setting the bone weight or doing animations can cost a lot more time than renaming the bones right now. So in the top right, I click on visibility and name the bones. On a side note, just like in your scene hierarchy, if you hold Alt and then left click, it will open every nested object. Next, we need to connect the bones to the sprites, and for that it's easiest to just use Auto Geometry. Here you can choose how detailed you want your mesh to be. More detailed means less weird behavior when moving around, but also higher performance cost. After that, there's quite a bit of cleanup to do. In the bottom we choose Bone Influence and then go through every sprite by double-clicking it and removing every bone that shouldn't have any influence on the sprite. Back in the editor, it's time for the inverse kinematics, which gives us the option to move the last link in a bone chain and have Unity figure out how the other bones then have to move. So if you move the hand, Unity will move the top and lower arm for us. So drag the Fat Man prefab into the scene and add an inverse kinematics manager to it. We're going to need 5 IK solvers, one for each leg, each arm and the belly. Later on, I actually decided to not use the IK for the belly, but it's of course up to you. Since all of those consist of three bones, we can just use the limb solver. If you have more bones, you need to choose one of the other options. So far in every tutorial I've seen, including the official ones, people create empty game objects as the effector, but personally I find it a bit easier to just use the last bone. 
I'm starting with the font leg here, so I take the font foot bone and assign that as the effector and then I click create target and I also uncheck constrain rotation. When animating I can then first place the heel of the foot in the correct position and then afterwards rotate the foot manually. Then I do the same for the other solvers. If you get this weird thing where an arm or leg bends the wrong way, you can just click the flip checkbox. By default the IK solvers are created outside of the bones, so when you move the root bone you get this effect. Depending on what you're going for, this might be really useful, but personally I prefer to have more control. So I make the solver objects child of the root bone. As you've probably seen, I've placed the bone of the lower back leg pretty badly, but there is an easy fix. Back in the skinning editor, I can just click edit bones and then move them around freely. Now the foot bone is kind of placed wrongly though, but to fix that all I need to do is turn off the IK solver, adjust the bone and then turn the solver back on. Ok, time for the animation. Just create a new clip, call it Fat Man Walk and hit the record button. I used the camera frame box as a ground reference and started with the lowest point of the walk. That happens right after the front foot hits the ground and takes all the weight. So drag the body down, place the feet and with Ctrl plus C I copy all the keys and paste them into frame 60 so we get a nice looping animation. I also paste it right in the middle because it happens for the other foot as well. So in the middle I just swap the feet and try to place them the same as in the first frame so the walk looks more natural. Right in the middle between the lowest points are the highest points of the body, which is when the leg that just took all the weight stretches out and pushes the body up. Again I just copy the keys and swap the feet. Uh, I did a little mistake here, I didn't really swap the feet, but then I quickly realized I was just using the same foot, creating a bit of a dance move and then I corrected it. When the legs are done I move on to fine tune the feet because they rotate based on the next keyframe, but I want them to stick to the ground. So I just add some keys to adjust the foot rotation. And lastly I once again copy all the keys from the first frame and paste them into the last one. I do that quite often when animating, as things keep changing and I always want to make sure that I have a perfect loop. The arms are pretty easy if we pretend for a moment that they move perfectly opposite to the legs. In reality they are a bit offset, but let's ignore that for the sake of this tutorial. I started out a bit extreme, something that would be more fitting for one cycle, but then I took it down a notch. I also adjusted the position of the shoulder and as usual I kept copying the first frame into the last one. Now on to the belly. First of all I noticed that the IK didn't give me very good results so I disabled it. To see things more clearly I also hit the front arm. Make sure though that you are not recording when you are disabling sprites because then actually the disabling of the sprite becomes part of the animation. So just stop recording, disable it and then start recording again. The idea here with the belly is to move it with the body but then delay it a little bit and also add some squash and, squash and stretch. You can either just drag the bones around or change the scale. To make things easier, I first record positions and scales in sync with the body and afterwards I move the keys a few frames behind.
I chose to keep the belly the way it is when the body is at its highest point and scale it up when the body goes down. For that I need to add the current properties as keys. For that you can either click add property and choose what you need, which is what I did, or you can do it a bit faster by simply changing the position or rotation by a tiny bit amount so Unity adds a key automatically, which is kind of the natural way to animate. My first attempt was a bit too subtle, so I made it more extreme. I also tried changing the scale, but that didn't look too good, so I just stuck to rotation and position. Once I'm more or less happy with the results, I take all of the keys from the belly and move them out by two frames, meaning moving them to the right. It's easy at frame 0, 15, 30 and 45, but there's a bit of a problem at the last frame, because dragging them out would extend the loop and just ruining the walk cycle. So what I do is, I move them out anyway, and then at frame 60 I click add property, so Unity creates a key that is exactly two frames before the keys I created. Then I delete the extended frames, and this time I copy the last frame into the first one. Okay, this is it. Thank you for watching the tutorial, and if you have any questions, feedback or requests for future videos, just leave a comment. And of course, subscribing would really help me out. Thank you and goodbye.